My presentation will focus on cellular mechanisms of insulin resistance. I will talk about the role of the rapamycin insensitive mTOR complex 2 in the regulation of the insulin receptor substrate. mTOR stands for mechanistic target of rapamycin. Studies through the years have revealed that mTOR plays a central role in cellular metabolism. It controls cell growth in response to the presence of nutrients, and it performs its function by controlling a number of anabolic processes to allow cells to grow and divide. Rapamycin is currently being used as an immunosuppressant and anti-cancer drug. Lately, rapamycin has gained attention as a possible elixir of life since it was shown to extend the lifespan of mice. So far before this discovery, caloric restriction was the only effective way to prolong lifespan in animals. Paradoxically, inhibition of mTOR can also lead to insulin resistance since mTOR plays a central role in the insulin signal transduction pathway. So the question is, how can inhibition of mTOR prolong life while promoting insulin resistance? Rapamycin can mimic starvation conditions or caloric restriction by inhibiting mTOR. Thus, less mTOR signaling is actually beneficial for increased lifespan. On the other hand, in the presence of too much nutrients, mTOR signaling is enhanced or becomes unrestrained. This condition can lead to several diseases including insulin resistance, diabetes, obesity, even cancer, and eventually decreases lifespan. mTOR exists as two protein complexes in the cell, termed mTOR1 and mTOR2. The purple protein in this figure depicts mTOR1. mTOR1 consists of the proteins mTOR, Raptor, and LST8. It is active in the presence of nutrients. Insulin signals augment mTOR1 signaling via activation of the protein kinase AKT, which relieves the inhibitory action of the tumor suppressor protein complex TSC or tuberous sclerosis proteins. Activation of mTOR1 leads to promotion of cell growth via increased protein synthesis. To prevent uncontrolled cell growth in the presence of excess nutrients, mTOR1 can downregulate insulin signals via a negative feedback loop as shown by the bold arrows in this figure. mTOR1 and its downstream target, S6K, promote phosphorylation of serine sites in the insulin receptor substrate, or IRS1. IRS1 is a critical adapter protein that transduces signals from the insulin receptor to downstream signals including PI3K. When phosphorylated at tyrosine residues, IRS1 can bind signaling proteins such as PI3K, which triggers a cascade of signaling events culminating in cell growth. On the other hand, the serine phosphorylation of IRS1 by mTOR1 and other cell signaling protein kinases is a major mode of downregulating IRS1 signals. Previous studies have shown the rapamycin treatment, which inhibits mTORC1, can prolong insulin signaling due to inhibition of IRS1 serine phosphorylation. It is known from other studies that prolonged rapamycin treatment can also inhibit mTORC2. mTORC2 is composed of mTOR, Victor, SYN1, and LST8, and is depicted here in a yellow protein. The best known function of mTORC2 is the phosphorylation of AKT to promote its maturation and allosteric activation. Because mTORC2 controls a number of AGC kinases, such as AKT and PKC, that negatively feeds back to IRS1, we examined the status of IRS1 signaling in cells disrupted of mTORC2. We asked the question whether mTORC2 could play a role in IRS1 regulation. In A, we compared wild-type versus SYN1 knockout murine embryonic fibroblasts, which have disrupted mTORC2. We found that IRS1 levels were highly elevated upon mTORC2 disruption. Interestingly, serine phosphorylation of IRS1 mediated by mTORC1 in these cells was not defective, suggesting that the mTORC1 mediated regulation of IRS1 is not sufficient to downregulate IRS1. Furthermore, despite the increased IRS1 levels, tyrosine phosphorylation was dramatically reduced in SYN1 knockout cells, as seen in the bottom panel in A, indicating that despite increased protein levels, IRS1 had defective signaling capacity. We then examined why IRS1 levels are elevated. When we inhibited the proteasome using MG132, as seen in B, we found that there was defective ubiquitulation of IRS1 from SYN1 knockout cells. Because it was shown previously that IRS1 can be degraded by the proteasome by a mechanism that involves the ubiquitin ligase complex consisting of Collin 7 and the substrate targeting subunit FBW8, we examined expression of these proteins and found that FBW8 levels were significantly diminished in these cells, as shown here in C. Cal7 expression was normal, however. We also found that in FBW8 knockout MEFs, IRS1 levels were also elevated. 
This result suggests that the enhanced IRS-1 levels upon mTORC2 disruption could be due to defective expression of the subunit of the ubiquitin ligase FBW8. These results would then suggest that mTORC2 could control FBW8. Interestingly, FBW8 was one of the putative mTOR substrates that was identified in a previous phosphoproteomic screen. We therefore examined if mTORC2 can directly phosphorylate FBW8. By a coupled in vitro translation and kinase assay of FBW8 and mTORC2, we found that mTORC2 can phosphorylate FBW8 at serine 86, as shown here in D. Next, we examined if mutation of the possible mTOR target site, serine 86, could play a role in FBW8 expression. Indeed, we found that upon mutagenesis of the serine site to ALA, FBW8 expression diminished over time upon insulin stimulation. Thus, phosphorylation of this site by mTORC2 is required for FBW8 stability. The cellular compartment where IRS1 becomes downregulated and degraded has remained obscure. We therefore examined if FBW8 and IRS1 co-localize in either the cytosol or membrane to enable IRS1 to be targeted by the ubiquitin ligase complex. As shown in E, under normal conditions, the majority of IRS1 is present in the membrane compartments, shown here as a high-speed pellet and low-speed pellet fractions. Upon insulin stimulation, there is enhanced accumulation of IRS1 in the cytosol and decreased presence in the membrane fractions. But at prolonged insulin exposure, IRS1 is decreased in the cytosolic fractions. Interestingly, the localization of IRS1 in the cytosol upon insulin stimulation also correlates with increased presence of FBW8 in the cytosol, suggesting that FBW8 plays a role in IRS1 degradation in this compartment. Now, when mutant FBW8 was expressed instead in FBW8 knockout MEFs, the mutant FBW8 does not translocate to the cytosol, resulting in accumulation of IRS1 in this compartment. Together, our data revealed that IRS1 protein levels are controlled by mTORC2 via regulation of FBW8 stability. In conclusion, our studies show that in addition to enhanced mTORC1 signaling, which leads to IRS1 serine phosphorylation, as shown on the left side of the diagram, increased mTORC2 signals act in concert to promote insulin resistance due to degradation of IRS1 that is mediated by the Cal7 FBW8 ubiquitin ligase complex as illustrated here in the right side of the diagram. Our findings imply that instead of inhibiting both mTOR complexes, which would have the undesirable effect of promoting insulin resistance, insulin sensitivity could be enhanced by specific inhibition of IRS1 serine phosphorylation and targeting FBW8 to prevent IRS1 degradation.